At the American College of Cardiology's scientific session, Dr. George Dangus discussed the antiplatelet regimens being prescribed by U.S. cardiologists following percutaneous coronary interventions. In the United States, for patients undergoing PCI, there are several uh, new options for antiplatelet therapy uh, long term. They include the aspirin and clopidogrel as a standard, and experimentation has uh, found new doses of clopidogrel with increased uh, from double to even triple, even quadruple uh, doses sometimes. However, there are uh, other new agents such as the uh, prasugrel in combination with aspirin or the ticagrel in combination with aspirin. And each one of them has a very positive clinical data uh, regarding uh, more potent platelet inhibition, so to speak. At the same time, this has uh, led into the understanding, once again, I suppose, that the first month after a PCI is a very important month regarding uh, averting serious uh, uh, ad adverse events in relation to the procedures and the stents. And therefore, I think the doctors are indeed um, uh, sensitized into the need to potentially use um, uh, more intense antiplatelet arrangements, especially in the high-risk patients or in patients with acute coronary syndromes, ST elevation or non-ST elevation MI. Um, uh, what hasn't exactly clicked is uh, what I uh, uh, alluded to before in the uh, experimentation with different doses of clopidogrel. One would think that uh, clopidogrel resistance, which can be multifactorial, uh, could actually be in some ways understood better uh, and, and the clinically the doses could be assessed by use of the platelet function monitoring systems. Uh, but somehow these have not been included in the large trials that uh, uh, tested these the different doses. And therefore, although they sort of make sense, we don't really know exactly how to use them in clinical practice and how do they exactly mean on a patient basis. There are several practical difficulties that still have to be figured out. And, um, uh, the first of all is that the prasugrel use, especially in the longer term, has been associated with increased bleeding complications. And that kind of escalates the, uh, I would say, the nervousness or concern of the cardiology team of the hospital that uh, all these practical factors I'm going to list uh, hereafter are actually taken care of. And those include a very good understanding of the entire community about this new medication, what it does, what are its risks, and also to uh, when, when for, for example, prescribing or recommending it, uh, our understanding that uh, the pharmacist actually are going to be able to dispense it under the current patient's insurance plans, that uh, even the, the, uh, the nursing staff and other associates in the hospital will be able to address questions regarding this medication that patients and families may have, that on the outside, not only the pharmacist, but the referring physician, family practitioner, primary care, or specialist of another system, perhaps a, a gastroenterologist or other that may also treat this patient. All of them would be somewhat aware of what, what this drug is and, and what it means. And, and just one other thing, Dr. Uh, uh, Dargis, um, if you could address, um, this study was done in uh, Korea, and it seems celastazole has been most widely used in Korea and other Asian countries. And so um, what do you think are some of the roots of that difference of how it's used in Asia relative to the United States? And, and as a consequence of that, what relevance might these data have to U.S. practice? This is a great question. Silostazole seems to work very well in an Asian population, particularly because in, in, uh, in, in the, there's a genotypic resistance to clopidogrel at a very high level, very high, high, high rate in, in, this type, in, in this population. And therefore, these uh, results would apply very nicely to an Eastern Asian and particularly Korean population. Um, on, on, the, on the other hand, uh, the reverse would be applicable in, uh, let's say, the United States or Europe or, or Africa for that part, that the, the, uh, the, the rates of uh, uh, genotypic resistance to clopidogrel are expected to be much lower. Um, uh, there is also some other more practical issues with clopidogrel, with well, excuse me, uh, that um, uh, is a generic drug in the United States, is obviously available in Korea and the Asian countries, Eastern Asian countries. Um, but, for example, in several countries of Europe or in Canada, it's not available at all. So uh, I think that, again, um, 
erodes a little bit in the generalizability and the recognition of the data by many experts around the world because of this, um, I would say, variable availability uh, of, of, of the drug.